Hi, my name is Graham Hay. Um, I'm a uh, ceramic artist based in West Australia um, and I've given over 300 workshops in a dozen countries. Uh, this video is an update on the other videos on YouTube uh, explaining how to make paper clay. Uh, just to be aware that you don't have to make paper clay in many countries now. Most clay makers across the world now convert their clays into paper clay. Um, and you can easily find that by Googling. Uh, I have a list on my website if you're interested, if you can't find it locally. And a quick and easy shortcut in making uh, your paper pulp that you mix to your clay to make your paper clay. Um, I hope uh, you find this useful. In West Australia, the pa local paper, which is different to the national paper, it weighs, each sheet weighs about 10 grams or a third of an ounce for those imperial measurement. So based on that, I've done some simple maths. And you can see that one sheet, in this case, not every country, weighs about 10 grams or a third of an ounce. And so I'm looking at about 100 sheets to make up one kilogram or 2.2 pounds. Why am I being so fussy about the weight of the paper? You could be 50% out on the percentage of paper in your clay. And this may, has a substantial impact. You can vary, you know, 5-10% amount of paper pulp, but when you get 50% difference in the amount of paper in your clay, it does have major impact on how the clay works when you're trying to do dry to dry joint or the strength before and after firing. Now, the, the next part is really important. This is the, the, the important part. When you're mixing it up, use hot water. It's going to substantially reduce the amount of time it takes to convert the dry paper into liquid uh, paper pulp um, and more importantly also sterilize it so hot water is really important there's a number of ways of breaking it up mechanically before you add to the water the actually the easiest way is, is simply to separate each page before you put it into the bucket and just push it down into the water with your hundred sheets you may, may get to about halfway through them and it becomes uh, quite full. That's the time to get the power tools out. The thing that happens after about a couple of minutes of mi mixing, you may need to reverse the direction um, as the mixer gets clogged up and that'll loosen it up and get all the paper off it. Once you've been mixing it for a while, you might want to just check uh, the progress. I'm just using a cup. To take a glass, pour in a little bit of pulp, Top it up with a little bit of water. See, you can see pieces of paper floating around. Uh, this is not sufficiently beaten because um, those pieces of paper, when you fire, they become cavities within your clay. What we're <laughs> Just going to test. It's looking pretty good. There, it's better. That's perfect. When you're beating it, it looks like there's not enough water, but the paper, because it's got air with it, will float on the top. I don't suggest you put your hand in the hot water, but you can feel it with the mixer, you can find, so you can keep adding the paper to this amount of water, and in fact, probably even more paper than you require, so that you've got plenty of pulp, and you've beaten up, so you don't have to go through this process another time. You may notice that I've got two buckets at this stage, and the reason being that um, when you're mixing it up, certainly you can mix up um, a kilogram or 2.2 pounds of dry paper in a bucket the size of water, um, but it becomes very difficult to mix it. And in fact, I usually find if I split it in half and top it up with water, um, it, be it uh, beats it up much more quickly and makes it uh, more puree in a short amount of time. So once you've mixed up your uh, pulp, beaten it far enough that you get a beautiful puree with no large lumps of paper in it, um, we just need to talk about hygiene. Okay, 
So you've got cellulose fiber uh, in water um, and sometimes at a dark spot because it's below the surface out of light. Um, and it's a great breeding ground for bacteria and fungi. Um, so the final thing just before you sieve the water out of it, you need to mix something through it to stop any bugs growing. Certainly using hot water to beat it up makes it easy but also kills off a lot of the bacteria that may have been in your paper that have been sitting around in your garage or in your house or in your backyard. There is a wide range of pet favourites you'll see of people out there and over the years um, but I've gone for convenience but just I'll list a few of some of the things. Some people use be bleach, add just a little bit of bleach, you know, a teaspoon or so of bleach. Other use vinegar. Some people use good old uh, dishwashing liquids, liquid soaps, um, more of the organic ones. Some people use tea tree oil, whatever your favorite for, for killing bugs, bacteria and fungi around your house or in your studio. Just a few drops or a, a teaspoon or so of that into your bucket. Um, I use what's always available. Um, and just a little, little bit in the bucket and then beating it up before we sieve it. Uh, that will prevent the clay um, breeding bacteria and fungi for, and it's so extend its shelf life. But overall this process of using hot water and using single sheets placed in the bucket at a time will substantially reduce your beating time from three quarters of an hour down to virtually uh, 10 minutes uh, to, to 15 minutes uh, and um, that's a substantial saving. The other alternative is to leave it overnight soaking in hot water and beating that may save you another five minutes. Uh, in the old days when we first started, I remember the first paper clay symposium, we had great mixing contraptions with bricks or the drill tied to a bench and so on because it had to run for half an hour to an hour at a time. And you can see just a simple little change made a huge difference. I hope that helps you in your studio. An important thing to remember is to keep the water left over that you'd sieved uh, the paper pulp out of um, to use in making your liquid or dry clay into a clay slip which you're going to add to the paper pulp. The reason being is that a PhD by uh, Jean uh, Kim uh, published in, in uh, Sweden, uh, paper composite porcelain, uh, major finding of her research is that if you use that water left over from sieving your paper uh, in making your soft or dry clay into a clay slip to mix up with the paper clay, it will add the chemicals left over and make a stronger fired body. So it will make your after kiln firing clay, ceramic clay, ceramic paper clay body stronger.